I thought um, before we transition to the data preparation tasks here, I thought I'd just quickly walk us through uh, or introduce a very uh, interesting technique that is extremely useful when you're embarking upon data mining projects that involve some aspects of machine learning, right? So saving the state of the various stages that you're working on. If you think about it, right, we, we've, we've actually worked on various stages here. The previous notebook this, uh, uh, walked us through pre-processing stage. Um, what we are going through now is the exploratory data analysis stage. Afterwards, we, we embark upon um, a few other additional data preparation activities that we need to perform, and then finally data transformation, then modeling. Um, what you soon discover is that it, 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 it is sometimes important for you to save the state of these different stages, right? Um, and a library that I have found useful uh, for this particular task is Joblib, right? Of course, there are other, other libraries out there, like I think within scikit-learn you also have access to PIC or something. Um, and uh, I believe one of these links here, I think it should be this link here. It takes you to an interesting Stack Overflow discussion where people explain why Joblib is, is better, right? Depending on what you're doing. Anyway, it turns out it's much more efficient. Um, but for this, particular, um, for this particular stage, I thought I would just quickly show us exactly how you get to save a particular state, right? So what we're going to do is just save the stage of the pipeline where we are at, that's the exploratory data analysis phase, so that when we transition to the data preparation stage, all we have to do is reuse the saved state, right? Uh, and we use uh, two features here, it's a joblib dump function and the load function. So you use dump to save the state, you use load to refer to the saved state. Um, and really the saved state is nothing more than a data file that you refer to, right? So it's, it's the, the entire process is somewhat serialized, right? Um, there's more information uh, on the official job lib. I don't know if this is official job lib uh, page, but uh, there's documentation here that explains exactly when you might want to use the dump and the load functions. And there's a very nice uh, use case example given here, similar to what we're going to walk through just now. I do encourage you to read through the documentation, by the way. All right. so. On with it, we're going to save the state. Remember that what we're interested in is saving the pre-processed uh, or the pre-processed pandas data frames associated with the four data sets. Is it three data sets? Uh, so we have the initial survey, we have the student demographic data set, the initial survey data set, the initial, um, the initial survey data set, we have the student demographic data set, and then we also have the uh, student assessment scores data set. Uh, so what we want to do is before we actually get to the stage where we perform those other additional data preparation activities, we save the state, right? Uh, and again, a reminder that the assessment scores have quiz scores, uh, test scores, and examination scores. Uh, so using Joblib is quite easy, really. You need to import Joblib from scikit-learn.externals, right, as I'm doing here. Once you do that, you just run joblib, uh, you just run the dump function, um, which is available in joblib. Text in, by default, text in two parameters. The thing that you want to save, in this case, is this pandas data frame, and the name that you want to associate with that saved state. Um, in my case, I use the convention that you find in literature where each saved uh, state is abbreviated by PKL, which is short form for a PICO, right? It's a PICO file. Uh, so you notice here the output is uh, the actual file that will have this saved state. Uh, and true to that, really, if I navigate to, and I'm sorry about this, if I navigate to, uh, if I navigate to um, the the location on disk where I'm running this Jupyter notebook from, who. Okay, where I'm running this Jupyter notebook from, you notice that, uh, Christ, you notice that I will find that file, right? I don't know if you can see this file, this Pico file here, yeah? I've just created this Pico file, and so this thing here is 63 kilobytes in size. Now, you'll soon notice once we start uh, implementing these machine learning models that uh, 
for 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 safe states associated with these models, right? Uh, the FAO is usually extremely large. Uh, so it dependent on what sort of operation you are performing. And if I can just showcase an example here, I think I do have an example. I, I hope I do. Uh, unless I've backed up that information. Oh, Christ. Great. So if I go into the script directory here and I just check for Pico files, you notice that uh, some of these files are quite large, right? If you look at this file, for instance, 26 megabytes in size, right? Uh, this happens to be, uh, I'm trying to see if I can find the machine learning model that was saved here. Can't find it. Oh, there we go, not so large. If you look at this, this stochastic gradient descent um, model here, uh, and it turns out that uh, saving the state of the model like this becomes incredibly useful when you're deploying the model, right? Because all you do is you save the, the, the trained data set, um, and then you, you you actually incorporate this particular saved state or the saved model as part of the um, the part of the application that implements the deployment or that waits through the deployment phase of um, of the problem that you're solving. But key thing here is uh, you import joblib and then you dump uh, the state that you want to save and specify the file you want to save it to. So you notice I'm doing the same thing for demographics, right? I dump it here. Um, and then I save the state for all the three assessments, quizzes, tests, and the exam. Boom. And then this is saved. Uh, so you, you very soon we we'll get to see exactly how we get to uh, we get to we get to make use of uh, saved states, right? But to maybe as an example here, I will I'll quickly showcase exactly how we can do this, right? So assuming you've saved you've saved this uh, you've saved um, you've saved a file such as this, for instance. Oh, sorry about that. You've saved um, let's see you saved a state like uh, let's look at the exams for instance. Saved it in this file, right? Uh, to make to refer to it, all you have to do is you make use of uh, joblib. Dot load, right? And you specify the file that you want that has a saved state, right? The serialized saved state. Uh, of course, you need to assign uh, example, assign a variable, right? So example saved state. Um, and then once you once you run that, you notice that you actually have access to uh, to this thing here. If I say columns here, this will, will have the same sort of it will have the same sort of information as the initial data frame that I created. So 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 if you if you sit down and think about this, really, you realize that uh, this is useful in instances where you don't want to where you'd have to rerun certain phases of the pipeline. If, if I was to share this, when I share this data, this Jupyter notebook with you, for you to get to the stage where we're at right now, you'd have to rerun all the different steps. To avoid doing that, what you can do is just make reference to a saved state and then start from there, right? So um, it turns out that uh, this particular technique is incredibly useful in trying to avoid you uh, rerunning steps associated with your data mining pipeline. 